This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pods, moving and storage, solved. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, and by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome back to Bayou Adventures here in Lacombe. And welcome back to the, one of my favorite places to stop and favorite ladies, Miss Shannon. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you all here again today. Nice bright day out there, too. Well, I got some great fall weather going on and got some good fishing not too far from here going on, too. Right. Uh, right. Good fishing and uh, got a lot of reports that came in. Shannon, let's talk to you. What's, what's, what's been going on new? Because you always got something in the making here. Every time event. you come in, there's another improvement, right? I see. We got you in a different spot of the shop right now because we're working on every little section in here. We keep adding more things, so we're like squeezing y'all into new spots. How's so Mr. Green's seminars going oh, on? Oh, it's huh? great. Um, so every Thursday, Mr. Green's mm -hmm. been here. And um, so this Saturday, I'd like to invite everybody if they'd like to come. He's going to have one of his final seminars for the season on Thursday night, and then we're having a big party here um, at Bayou Adventure on Saturday. Mr. Green's going to start the seminar. He'll have a few guest speakers, and then he's going to do a little fish fry. So for all of the ones that have been coming to his seminar and all the ones that wish they would have been coming to his seminar, if that's all of you, y'all are all invited to, that's going to be Saturday um, from noon to 4. And like Mr. Green says, always the fish fry is at 4 o'clock. Wow, Great time. Tigers out of town. Yeah, at 12 o'clock you can get your fishing or hunting trip in early in the morning and come out here. And we're talking, of course, about Forrest Green, who really is a legend in the Bayou Lacombe area when it comes to fishing. Uh, yeah, look. I was looking at these signs right now, and I, and I, want, I want you to do a little advertisement. This is unbelievable. Your kayak rentals, the daily rentals, $39. For the whole day. For the whole day. Look, a guided sunset paddle on the, on the bayou. Look, $55. Look what it includes. It includes your kayak, a vest to paddle, your guide, use of a headlamp and a drink and a snack, and complimentary drop-off and pickup also. So. We do transportation from here to the to the launch. And then if there's a group of y'all that want to come in from like the New Orleans area, we have a shuttle. Call us. We can come pick up the whole group. Yeah, Don. What you got? We ready to go. Well, I got I got duck geese, season. I got ducks, oh, I yeah. got everything. Well, we got all that. We got a good fishing report. We got the H and H tournament report to talk about. And some surprisingly good opening day duck reports came out. Because we got the East Zone right over here. They got a refuge, a big branch. National Wildlife Refuge right down the road here is open for public hunting here. It's right. nice to wake up to gunshots out right here instead of <laughs> yeah. in the city. You're exactly right. There's a whole different meaning to it. It's always really promising when you hear that here. <laughs> All right, stay with us. We'll be right back. We're at Bayou Adventures on Highway 190 uh, right there on the Bayou Lacombe. And you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Relationships are everything in life. For me, the most important relationships start with faith, family and friends. I feel blessed to be married to my high school sweetheart of over 25 years. We were both born and raised in Louisiana and so were our four children. We're proud to call Louisiana our home. That's why giving back is so important to us. Whether it's car seats, bicycles, or helping those in need. At Gordon McKern Injury Attorneys, we feel blessed knowing that we can come to work every day and help our community when they need us the most. Call 800-653-9968. It's 5 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday from one of the most beautiful places you can ever hunt, ducks and geese. We're in Mare Rouge, Louisiana at Top Gun and getting ready to go shoot some speckle bellies. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Pod's moving in storage. I need to clean out my study. We'll deliver a container. My brother-in-law's moving in. Maybe he'll help you pack. He's lazy. We can refer some professionals. It's just until he finds work. We can keep things at our storage center for as long as it takes. I am not happy about this. Or you can keep your things on site for quick unloading. Did you say freeloading? I said unloading. I heard freeloading. I'm sure you did. Store on site or let us drive your things to our secure storage center. Pods, moving in storage, solved. We're 
with Top Gun in Marouge, Louisiana. Uh, had a great opening weekend. It's Tuesday. This will be our fourth morning in a row, hopefully to kill a limit. Uh, we're going to get in a ditch bank this morning. There's been geese on both sides of it. Uh, we're just going to kind of get in between where they've been and hope they'll come to the decoys. Ladies and gentlemen, in Marouge, Louisiana, at Top Gun, it's game time. That rain's getting yeah. on in there. This is a, some of them are going down to Horseshoe on that other place down south of here. There's been a bunch down there every evening. We had a shot. Where are they coming from? Look at them. Some of them look so much cool. That's a long way. Cobra, we got geese all around us. Most people don't know when to blow, what to blow, when you got singles, and when you got flights. Tell us your rule of thumb. I mean, what we try to do is is, you know, when there's this many, you, you can't hardly call them anyway. You about got to get where they're going. But, you know, normally when there's just scattered geese around and you're trying to pull them to a few decoys or something, we just, you know, if they're flying out 100 yards from you, you know, you just kind of... <laughs> something like that. You know, if you're trying to pull them into a away from a big wad, you know, and you want to sound like more geese, you know, we'll, we'll get more aggressive with them. We'll <laughs> try to sound like a ton of geese. Two but people you have a lot of You and your daddy do that well. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, uh, you know, but you don't want to get that aggressive unless you're trying to pull them away from a bunch of other geese. Give me the three or four basic calls. I mean, the ones that we use, different people call different ways, you know, but just to kill geese, if you can go, <laughs> you can kill a speck, you know, but if you want to sound like several, you know, you can get a little more fancy with it. You can <laughs> you make it sound like, you know, one over here and one over there, change your sound. <laughs> I 
that's kind of a feed call. They'll do that when they're sitting out in the field. I've been Nobody around a lot of goose them. calls. I go to the, the state championships and gate on every year and listen some calling and a lot of great calls. Yes, sir. You've been calling since you were daddy said since about four. Been I, working on it. I started, you know, trying when I was four. When I probably were, wasn't too good. When were you good? Uh, right I, I started getting decent. I still don't consider myself good, but we're fixing to shoot right here. Kill him! Kill him! We had a goose come in, we folded him up, but uh, you were asking me about goose calling and all that, and I guess uh, I, I guess I was about four when I started calling, and I started kind of getting to where I could make some stuff happen at about nine, eight, nine years old. But uh, about the age of my kids now, I got a nine-year-old boy and a 12-year-old boy that can already can already hold their own. I mean, you know, they still got some fine tuning, but but they can hold their own. They can make a duck come to you. Which, think, you think yeah, any of y'all gonna be as good as your dad? Probably not. No, it's hard to it's hard to compete with him. He's he can kill them whether he sounds good or not. He's he just they go where he is. <laughs> You know, Mr. Gary, everybody's always talking about made in Louisiana. Uh, every one of these are made in Louisiana. Every call uh, I've blown my whole life. Hey, Dale. Hey, Dale game calls. Can't beat them. Good job, boys. Good shot, Glenn. <laughs> Good shot, Mr. Lamb. Good shot. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. I'd go get it if that's you a good girl. Oh, that's a good girl. Colby oh, Daniels, we're only three or four days into the early goose season, still nearly two weeks before duck season starts here at Top Gun. Tell me about the population of waterfowl you've seen so far. <laughs> since, that, uh, since the cold front we had about two weeks ago, it's been above average. We've slaughtered the speckle bellies. We've killed between three or four blinds. We've killed 100 and probably 120 now. Mm -hmm. And three, well, this is the fourth morning, mm -hmm. I guess. So, I mean, it's been high. We've been seeing lots of ducks and all different species. Well, this fall has been dry and it's been warmer than normal for the most part. Does it surprise you that this many waterfowl are here already? Kind of does. I, I think we're running a little above average from what's usually here at this point. During the regular duck season, what species are most common? Well, different times, different ducks, but we normally kill pretty much a mixed bag of gadwalls, mallards, teal, uh, widgeons. We kill a good many widgeons. Of course, shovelers. Everybody got to kill a shovel. And I, I've there. seen plenty of pintails out here, too. Tons of pintails. You know, one of the things that, that I enjoy so much about coming to Top Gun is the fact that there is a variety of habitat for the ducks. And as things change during the course of a two and a half, three month season, ducks have an opportunity here to take advantage of some areas, and hunters have an opportunity to take right. advantage of that. Right. We do. We have, we're very diversified. We got, you know, thousands of acres of rice and beans, and then we. We've got our break that pulls us out a lot of times when they're not, a lot of times they're out here and at the break, mm -hmm. but a lot of times they'll be in the break and not out here. So it kind of bails us out, you know. I've seen hunters from Louisiana here every time that I've come, but I've also seen every time without fail hunters from out of state. Where do your, where do your clients come from? Last time we kind of, I don't really, you know, think about the, the states that much, you know, which ones that we do and don't have them from, but Last time we did kind of think about it, I think we had a group from every state except for like five states. Wow. So, you know, we we get a lot of people from out of state. Where can people learn more about Top Gun? Oh, I've got a web, or we've got a website. Uh, I've also got a Facebook page. The Facebook page is uh, uh, Top Gun Guides LLC, and the website is www topgunguides.com. Are there still some dates available for this season? But uh, I do have some pretty much full in November. 
I've got a few in December, and then I've got just a, uh, the majority of them are in January. I'm coming back here the 18th. Do you have me down of December? I do have you down. Good, good. I, do. I checked because last night. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, this, <laughs> this place consistently is one of the best duck hunting venues, I think, not only in Louisiana, but it across is. the South. It's the first place they hit and the last place they leave. Sounds that's, good to me. That's, that's just, and it's been that way for years. Thanks for a good hunt this morning. Yeah, it was. It was fun. Enjoyed it. my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Welcome to the H&H &H Tournament Report. And Gary, we got some good reports coming in from last couple of weeks, and we've also got some to look forward to in tell the next me, couple of weeks. Tell me about the Falling Tide. Who runs that? That's, that's like, the Bayou Coast Kayak Fishing Club. And that's it. Well, they, they, the reports all came in. Uh, the slam results was Josh People. Mm -hmm. uh, he had 14 pounds and 3 ounces. Second place was Tyler Drew at 10 pounds, 9 ounces. Third place was Michael Etheridge at 10 pounds, five ounces. Fourth place was Ty Lewis at nine pounds. Fifth was Brendan Bayard, who with you on the radio all the time, he had 9.7. Those are some impressive numbers given the, the, the circumstances of that tournament. You know, this was a very weird weekend. Oh. Inland, we had pretty calm winds, but down the lower coast and offshore, it was blowing, and those guys had to deal with that. Yeah, that's, that's a slam. That's three fish. It and then the they had some great pitches they sent us. By the way, thank you, guys. The big fish was Daniel Burkett at 7 pounds, 11 ounces. That's almost 80 pounds. And the trout was Ian Jaleski at 3 pounds, 2 ounces. And the flounder was Wayne Lop, 2 pounds, 14 ounces. That's almost 3 pounds. It looked bigger than that in the picture. Uh, the leopard was uh, Chris Cox with 11 spots. So... Thank you guys for getting here. I know y'all was, was on time last week, but uh, thank y'all. That was, like Don say, some rough conditions. They did. And up and down that highway over there, well, that's been good, Highway 23. So, uh, And then we got another. Livingston Parish had their inaugural Bassmaster High School Challenge. It was out of Manshack, the public land in Manshack, over there by Menendorf. Uh, they want to brag. They had more girl participants. They said Sarah Crawford and Emma Gotro. And if in the Livingston Parish, they had Hannah Nick and Aaron, team with Aaron Riley, and Gina Hobgood, Hobwood, and Garrett Moe fished that. So they wanted to give a shout out to those girls so they get more and more girls participating in the high school tournament. Now, I got to. I got the team standards right now. First place was Reed Rayburn and Brock Bennett. They were from Livingston Parish Bathmasters. Uh, they were 9.97 and 5 fifths. Second was Conrad Russian and Caden uh, Riley. By the way, the conditions on them, them kids were rough, too. If you know how it was Saturday, it was just unbelievable, the wind whipping. But they, they still always come through. They had four fish at 5.98. Third place was Peyton Walker and Brock Harrison at 5.37. The three bass, big bass was Reed Raven and Brock Bennett. That's the winners. They had a 2.54. The high school result for his team, first place was Livingston Paris Bassmasters with 15.3. Second was Central High School with 10.94. And third was Zachary, 5.92. So congratulations again, and thank you again to the bros. But send us that information, send us those pictures. 
Yeah. I promise you, that what y'all sent is very interesting. People around the state, and one reason, one of the fastest growing things that are coming up, high school and college sports. So, Donna, I, I think that's it. Let me check. I got any reports. And uh, all I got is an announcement coming up. Uh, I just had it, Don. Well, I did. Turn it over. Yeah, turn right there. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. We got it coming up at Cypress Point. The Lafayette Kayak Fishing Club has their turkey trout throwdown. That's the five trout. Right. November 19th. All right. Now, also coming up this weekend on Saturday, registration will be Friday, uh, the first ever, hoping to make it an annual event, the Crush Rodeo. And this is to benefit uh, the, the those for the coast. This is uh, Ashley Ferguson. This is going to be held uh, over in the Slidell area. And there's going to be fishing, food, drinks. They'll have raffles, uh, silent auction. And this is uh, all to benefit those of the coast, very worthwhile uh, organization. So if you want to participate in that, information's on the screen. Check out the website and get signed up and participate in that one. And by the way, you can go to H and H's website and you see the stuff that they do right now. Some of their baits right now are one of the hottest baits on the water, especially in the uh, Lafayette. I mean, uh, the feed area, and then all around Delacro, under a cart, sparkle beetle, short tree sparkle beetle, or even fishing for a lot of grass. They reeling it up at top and just slow rolling and catch. All right, we're at Bayou Adventures in Lacombe. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana, and Gary, great hunt up there at Top Gun, and according to what you saw, this should have a great opening day this weekend. Now, Delacroix Island, another fantastic spot. I'll get to that on the hunting report as far as who I talked to, but you went firsthand. Mike Benj, Delacroix Corporation, celebrating 50 years of him hunting down there, and uh, you sound like you guys had a great time. Oh, it, just, it was just amazing. You know, uh, this is the second year in a row that I hunted with him. You and I hunted once before, way back then, and we, we, we was in there lay down blinds up in, mm -hmm. the, in the boat. But he built a little blind, he had it set up. In fact, today while we shooting, uh, Ducks Unlimited is coming in to shoot a couple, two or three days with them. So, and Delacroix is part of their, their feature, they do it, so it probably, probably may be next year yeah. if you're watching. So if you're watching this this week, this was opening weekend, Almost all the guys that been hunting for years over there, the Gonzaleses and all them. And, and before I go any further, Mark Saladino. I know you've heard of him, Mark, mm -hmm. him over there. He's a, one of the best cooks to not be a famous chef. I'm telling you, he made a duck gumbo with teal. It was so tender to break off, and the, and the gravy was just unbelievable. Two nights in a row, we toasted the veterans. We toasted the former members of that mm -hmm. club. Uh, Mike and him drank their little wine and did their toasting, said a little prayer. Food was excellent, like always. The camaraderie was unbelievable. Just to be around them again is, is an event in itself. There's so much love among them. There's so many memories and stories Absolutely. that I, I can't even get a word in and listen. <laughs> but uh, he, had his, he had his good friend Carl Flowers. It comes from, uh, they sort of swap mm -hmm. the deer hunting and dove hunting for coming here and opening weekend. 37 years 
Mm. Uh, Carl's been here, him and his son. So, further ado, let's go to Delacroix with one of the kingpins in DU. He's always been on national committee, he's been state president. Mike Benz, and you can see his love for duck and duck hunting. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana, my 50th opening morning for duck hunting. Great, great, great morning to be out here in the marsh. A lot of shooting. Got a little bit of a late start this morning. We've got a couple of birds in the blind already. The dog is ready to retrieve. Saravi is as excited as can be. Certainly Good. this opening weekend with the Alabama crew is, is always something to look forward to. My weekends with my fraternity brothers when they show up. We don't shoot a lot of ducks when they show up, but we do shoot a lot of bull, you know what. <laughs> and I drink a lot and have a good time, reminisce about old days. Uh, watching the kids, watching the kids grow up out here. Look at all those the, the young men and now uh, Earl's son is 37, going to be 37 in February. My daughter will be 37 in April. Her husband, I mean, I just watch these kids grow up. Some of them from really, really youngsters, uh, four and five, six years old, and some like my son-in-law starting at college. So just watching the kids grow up out here and, and, and become young men, successful business people, and, and still pulling their weight most of the time. I still have to do a lot of the work around here. There's something wrong with that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Robbie is three years old, doing great. Doing good. She loves to be out here. This is the second year? This huh? is the third year hunting. Third so, year. Yeah. First year was, you know, she did real well the first year, but she was a puppy. I'd say she picked up maybe 70% of the ducks we shot. Last year she was at 95%. Counting the youth hunt last weekend and this weekend, she's at 100%. So, doing good. Saravi? Saravi? I think two of them fell. I guess no, that one did. Stay tuned for more Paradise, Louisiana. Voted best of Louisiana outdoors three years in a row. Hey, y'all, it's Sam Barbera. I'm with the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit that raises funds and provides support for the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Department. We assist with numerous projects like black bear, whooping crane, bald eagle, as well as family, youth, and women's workshops. For all of the information on the foundation, visit LAWFF.org. We need your support to help our wildlife and fisheries. Visit LAWFF.org. Second morning, 2017. Coastal zone, look at it.
This is my 50th hunting season. I was not allowed out here during the hunting season until I got to be a teenager, 13, so 50 years. I've been coming out here. Uh, when I was a young man, I started hunting with a lot of the guys that are hunting, still hunting with me, Eddie Gonzalez, uh, Mark Saladino, who cooked last night, great, great, oh, great gumbo, you know, was excellent. He, he started out here, I guess I met Mark we were in our real early 20s because uh, he's got the same thing. His uh, son is the same age as my daughter. They were in kindergarten together. And then uh, so Mark started coming out here with his father-in-law, Eddie's dad. And, uh, but it's been a lot, a lot of great, great memories through 50 years. Um, the young guys are still here. Eddie, Mark, myself, Tommy Lott Jr. Uh, but our kids now are all in their 30s late 20s and they've, we've watched them grow up out here. It's amazing what, what I've seen for 50 years out here. Great opening weekend, uh, a lot of birds, a lot of opportunities, a little rusty shooting skills, but we had a great, great time. Uh, look forward to the rest of the season. We'll see what happens from here on out, but it was a great opening weekend. Water's a little high, the water's come up really a lot, so that may affect the ducks. They may leave because of the high water. We'll see what happens. So, well. Hey, it's always a great opening weekend from a guy from Alabama. You don't get to do this all the time. It couldn't have been any better as far as I'm concerned. Go Alabama! Go Tigers! Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change has been keeping cars and trucks in Baton Rouge clean and running smooth for over 50 years. At Benny's, we feature professional car washing, complete detailing, high-tech waxing and buffing, interior cleaning, and tire shine. Benny's, one stop for car maintenance with complete oil and lube services and even state inspections at our express location. Visit one of our five convenient locations, including our newest store on Greenwell Springs Road. And don't forget to stop by Be Quick Convenience Store and Fuel Stop. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Drive in dirty, drive out clean. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. Hunting seasons are here. Most zones will have some type of opening with some type of weapon for deer, 
Small games wide open. We got the east zone for the waterfowl season open up. It's full blown hunting time now. It's all gone, gone on. I got a, I got a, a picture of first deer, uh, Caden Addison. He killed a spike in Norwood, Louisiana. Uh, look at that smile on this guy's <laughs> face. It's just unbelievable. And uh, uh, Jacob Heath sent me some squirrels that he killed. Jacob Heath and the, the organization, they were hunting the Mississippi Delta. That's up, up north now, not, not the Mississippi River. Uh, they were hunting with a dog and here's some squirrels. And you see them showing off that black squirrel. That picture's not quite as clear, but uh, y'all keep sending that picture. Don't forget, squirrels, ducks, rabbits, anything you do in the outdoors, if you got something unique, please send it, especially when it has something to do with uh, youth hunters. So. I got a lot of reports this year there's been a pretty good mass crop, which is always indication of the squirrel activity. And last year's was good, and this one's good. There's been some good squirrel hunting going on. So if you got a spot and you haven't been there to check it out, you've been fishing or doing other hunting, don't forget about those squirrels, those bushy tails. And rabbit season's not too far off either. You know, no, we need they, a cold they, weather they for that. But. Well, then they usually wait till the deer hunters sort of slacking right, up too. and they go in the mirrors and the butter. But the, by the way, the Louisiana Wildlife and Fishers have made arrangements now. They've got some areas they let these rabbit hunters get in early. So mm -hmm. they've really been working hard in the Bayou, the Bayou State Rabbit, rabbit Hunters, hunters Association. Mm -hmm. still growing by leaps and bounds. So if you ever want to join a great organization, that's one of them you can join. And you'd be surprised. They're looking after not only rabbit hunters, but they're looking after other dog hunters. So they mm -hmm. They're making sure they're staying at the Wildlife and Fisheries meeting and I want to congratulate them. Talk about squirrels, too. You know, you can tell that even in your subdivision, you might going to be shooting them around your house. A lot of people trap them, get rid of them. But I'm seeing an unbelievable amount of squirrels. They eat mm -hmm. my bird feeders and everything else. They, you're right. I and mean, there must be something they had to do with it. a lot of acorns on yep, the ground. They had a good they had I a got good a lot of water them. oaks. Mm -hmm. and I sure got a lot of limbs in my yard, too. <laughs> so, but... Uh, it, it's one of the things to look for. Don, uh, why don't you start off with your duck report because you yeah. you were on the radio and people were calling you in, and I'll just back you up on some of the things We you had, had reports, really good reports, from the coastal area and the western area. It was kind of a surprise. Uh, wildlife and Fisheries did their site survey and flew over, and they indicated there was uh, not near the number of birds that there were this same time last year. But as Larry Reynolds will tell you, that, that can be misleading because sometimes if they don't fly over transects where people really manage for good habitat, there can be large numbers of waterfowl. Uh, Delacroix uh, in the east where you hunted with Mike Benj, that was a great spot. Chris Pike had a cast and blast trip. They had 22 birds by 7 o'clock and picked up the last two to make a limit. Uh, also out there was uh, Darren Digby. He hunted out there and he was working on getting his limit pretty early. My uh, nephew, Iron Mike, and uh, little Drew, uh, and a couple of other hunters, Adam, went out there, and uh, they killed limits in the Reggio area, which is basically adjacent to Carnarvon and Delacroix. All in all, that area really fared out pretty well, a lot of action over in that area. Then kind of moving more uh, to the, the, the western side, I got good reports from Point of Shen. There was a good number of birds that were, were taken there. Down the mouth of the river, Ryan Lambert, all of his guys limited out fairly early. Uh, most of the hunters were reporting a lot of teal. And on opening day, everybody's pumped up. They're ready to go. The teal are the early flyers. And if you take your shots early, you're going to end up with a limited teal. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want gray ducks, pintails, widgeons, some of the other ones, they're a little bit late flying bird, and you kind of be patient when you're hunting those. Uh, also, Ryan uh, a little more encouraged now that he's been out there? Or yeah, he but he's not any more encouraged on the habitat. You know, they lost a lot. The, the storm surge from Nate really burned them bad there. But uh, as far as the numbers of birds they, that he had, they were there, but he's nothing to hold them. So you got to hope for fronts, front after front after front, if we're going to have a successful season down that way. Uh, I talked to uh, Hayden Richard and Gaydon, Vermilion Waterfowl Hunters. I think they did better than anybody. They had 24 birds in 19 minutes. It was a very short day for them. Where was this at? This is at uh, Vermilion Waterfowl Hunters. Oh, where Hayden Richard, where, where, where you went earlier, right. yeah. And uh, they were on their way. They had five specks when I, when I hung up with them uh, on the radio. Uh, Kirk Stansel had an unusual hunt. He hunts over at Hackberry Rod and Gun over in Calcasieu area. He said they had plenty of ducks on their early scouting during the week. But then when they went out there on opening morning, they don't know where the birds went. And as soon as he got off the air with us, by the time we came back on again 30 minutes later, they had limits. The birds arrived. And you know when the shooting starts, Birds can be in one spot and not another, and vice versa, because that, that certainly moves them around. 
Let me, uh, let, let me also tell you, uh, when I enjoyed listening to you on, on, the, on our phone. You were mm -hmm. talking to Mike Benji, and I, I got some of that video. I don't know if Chris might be able to run it. Him, we are talking to you, and you giving a report. We sitting there blind, and it's always well, fun. Well, I'm going to show you a there. picture of my duck blind. I was in Saturday morning right at sunrise. I'll show you a picture. That okay, but well, that disappointing place is Pecan Island. Mm -hmm. Billy Bruce would be on the wildlife and fisheries, got yeah. the store. Uh, he told some people the worst he's seen it since he'd been hunting there, Pecan Island. Some of the places I, I got big reports we didn't really hear. My brother and them in our way is always one of the better blinds around. Uh, they hunting over there. The opening day, they had four people hunting, and they killed 18. They didn't make their limit. Uh, they had a mixed bag of, of birds. Uh, the second day, it was Sunday, this, yesterday, uh, they didn't kill but 13. So usually that's good, but they've seen a lot of birds in the area, but some of the places were down. One of the places that was up, Bruce Dodd and them were hunting in Amelia, Morgan City mm -hmm. area. We're getting more reports from that. I remember that's been down for years, but... Uh, Bruce Dodd, Scott Dufresne, uh, they got some pictures, uh, almost limits in there. And, and naturally, you see uh, Delacroix, I run in that uh, Hunter Piglet and his dad, Anthony, mm -hmm. from Pugula. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to a bunch of those kids at the landing right now. We got a few little sound bites I was going to show you. Here's these kids at the landing, Delacroix, Scarsdale Road landing, uh, all of them talking about it. Derek and Dominic Remenick are in the East Zone. Now, the A song, like you say, could have been north of 90, anywhere there. And they, I met them in Slidell at the Rotolas. He must Slidell. have been hunting the youth hunt, huh? Yeah, they met the uh -huh. youth hunt, and then that dog came down. Uh, my grandson, Blake Ashford, and his, the Venable Boys, and some of his friends, Tyler and all them big old boys that stayed at my camp, they went to the Biloxi Marsh to put in Brent Sound. He said, like a war. They all limited out there when they. First time I talked to him, they were too shy. And ten minutes later, coming back, he said, "Papa, we got our limit." So they had a great deal. Dwayne Chapman, and he had a, a young boy with him, Parker Couples and Murr Rouge. Uh, they had a youth hunt, and his kid also killed his first deer. But he sent a picture of the duck. He told he told Dwayne Chapman, he said, "Duck hunting is a lot more fun than deer hunting." So that's one again. Paul Patty again, another friend of yours. He had all in cast, Castanito. I don't know if that's Spanish or Italian, but I'll probably butchered it. But uh, it's part two. He had a youth hunt. He sent some pictures last week. It was a little late. But then again, Paul, thank you for sending in a report. And uh, that's, my, that's my duck hunting. That's, that's the only ones I had. Uh, but that's pretty broad. I didn't that's hear it. from Top Gun. I believe that he was going to do a youth hunt. And I promise you, within the next week, you're going to hear more and more from, from uh, Blake Swallow mm -hmm. up there at, at uh, Straps and Stringer. He is, uh, they were going to do a youth hunt, but he says there's a lot of birds on Catahoula right now. I think you tried to get him, but he probably was in the woods. You didn't get to get him Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Well, there's going to be a lot of duck hunters out this weekend, and if you want to make it a blast and cast and catch some fish after your duck hunt, We'll be right back with the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report here at Paradise, Louisiana. Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving and storage solved. Aggressive, modern, and durable. The latest advancement in spinning has the Revo name on it, and almost a century of fishing expertise in it. No matter where your passion takes you, world-class fishing is only a Revo away.
Welcome to the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. Gary, uh, starting offshore, very few offshore reports came in over the weekend. Winds were howling out there, high seas. Not too many people went out, and maybe we can do better for them next week. But on the inside, salt water, kind of surprising. A lot of people caught fish in a lot of areas. Uh, Robbie Campbell uh, backed up the, the earlier week with another great week of fishing down there. Interior marshes around uh, Hopedale, Shell Beach, uh, Stump Lagoon, Bob's Lake, uh, Peach Lagoon. Uh, even in the Mistigo, along the rocks, the Hopedale Dam, all those places producing. Um, you know, we also got reports from Mike Gallo. He said, uh, you know, that complex that generally is, is really good in the wintertime around the Chef, Chef Pass, uh, Intercoastal Waterway, uh, some of those areas around there like the Martello Castle where we made our last trip together with him and caught fish. All those areas are producing some speckled trout, nothing really big. Uh, there was some trout caught at the bridges. Finally, uh, not what you'd consider World Series trout, but I did get some sprinkling of reports of some speckled trout showing up at the bridges over there. Uh, Biloxi Marsh, still loaded with redfish. If you're looking for redfish, you can't go wrong there. Um, and then, you know, of course, down Highway 23, uh, we saw the results of the, the, the uh, Bayou Coast Kayak Fishing Club's Fallen Tide, surprisingly good for those guys that got out there. Uh, and then, you know, Leeville, Golden Meadow, those areas have just been stellar for most of the year, and it's continuing on now. Still getting good reports Catfish there. Catfish Lake, some of the old places yeah, that are coming well, in. Round Lake, Lake Inferno. Channel Green, all, all, all that stuff. Uh, Grand Isle, got some good reports from Darrell Carpenter. He said there's a pretty good fishing going on down there, too. Uh, they're catching reds. They're catching trout. Hadn't really slowed down. Uh, Ryan Lambert, he's concentrating a lot on the duck hunting. But when his guys go fishing, they're also doing good fishing primarily on the east side of the river. Going back fishing to Grand Isle, Fouchon area off Highway 1 again, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, our good friend Tommy Vitrine, he, he does that every year when he starts getting them cool fronts. He puts his little waders on and he starts walking that road and fishing these little lakes and ponds and catching trout. He likes the tsunami. He fishes, he also fish top water. Sometimes he'll fish in the evening, but when the tide is running through the through the bridges to the canal and the wind blowing out of the north, he fishes the right-hand side going down mm -hmm. the Grand Isle. It, it does more, the water stays cleaner if it gets dirty on the left side because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's on the windy side and the wind is pushing it in and pushing that dirty water. So, but if you want to fish off the road. Look, let, let, me, let me tell you a beautiful, this is this salt bayou right by my camp. This is one of the prettiest pictures you're going to see right now. Uh, Kelly Prendergast, uh, fishing with my neighbors next door. Uh, you wouldn't believe this beautiful girl with that big catfish right off that pier right now that caught that. By the way, Salt Bayou and all those areas right now around Island Marina, Lake Catherine, Lake Bourne, mm -hmm. uh, the Intercoastal Canal, they're catching bass. My yep. friends are also catching bass in the Subdivision Canal. Dudley's been catching fish in the Subdivision Canal. They're catching trout, not big, not many trout, but big trout. They, they, you can see, just like you saw last week on our show, uh, Chas Chapon is fishing in there on his report right there. He is fishing, you can tell he's fishing in the subdivision. They got some depots where they built mm -hmm. them subdivision and off these points that water runs through. Ken Lambert and them were fishing off of there. They drop shot. They're using plastic and they're using live shrimp. And they're catching a little, little bit mixed. They're catching redfish on the shallow water, but they're catching some beautiful trout. They ain't catching but 10 or 12, but they're right there at the house. They're not mm -hmm. even running. They're not even starting their motors sometimes. So all them subdivision canals, all of them there, Eden Isle, uh, Clipper Estates. Yeah, so if you got somebody in there, if you want to fish in there, you're out to win. That wind was atrocious all weekend. It was just unbelievable. Uh, from Island Marina, Miss Angie Stewart sent me a long report. The trout been in the shallow water last week. The flats, they're in the reds were also in the shallow water. They're catching sheephead, they're catching drum, they're using live shrimp, live cockahoes from Marina. Now, uh, at the assistant DA, Richard Martin was there. He's called it one of the best weekends he ever had last week. This weekend, the high winds turned in. All the captains changed the way they were fishing. They were saying they were getting out of the lakes, going up in the marsh. They weren't catching many trout like they're catching in the lakes, but they were catching big trout. 
They'd, they'd catch some better trout, and they would fish in the, wherever they could find clear water. Uh, Camp to Andy Jones, uh, like he said, stay away from the windy lakes. The secret was to find clear water. He placed in that VACCA tournament out the dock landing in Slidell. Uh, like I said again, Dudley, again, the same thing I talked to him. He was catching a lot of trout. When, he, when, the, when lakes got rough, he moved out of them. He was catching them in Lake Catherine, uh, Unknown Pass, and all them places like that. They were catching last week. But this past weekend, I'm sure when that wind lays down again, it's going to be another hot spot. Uh, Delacro, Little Lake, Richard and Lolly Beecher, live shrimp, redfish, speckled trout, beautiful cats, two beautiful couples doing real good. And go to the back page, Nick McGee had a 43-inch redfish in Vermilion Bay at Sippermore Point. And the feet again, the ones that got I fished with, Craig Legrees, him and Mark, uh, Mark Barker and Jerry Lacombe, they were fishing to the, it must have been a secret hole. They didn't take me to it. <laughs> Look at this beautiful picture of bass, speckled trout, redfish, and flounder. Mm -hmm. He called it a Cajun slam, but uh, they loaded the boat, did real good in a short time, and I wasn't there. Mm. So, Don, that's all I got a fishing report, but I, I want to leave with one statement. What about some freshwater action? Freshwater action fresh. is Henderson. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I've been getting a lot of reports from Henderson. I finally got a trip set up. Uh, my buddy Kenny and them were setting up a fishing trip Wednesday. I should be at the landing and meet them at 6 o'clock in Henderson, the Beulah Ranch landing, uh, Beulah Rose landing. So I should be able to let y'all know something next week firsthand where the fish are being caught in Henderson. They're both catching, they're also catching Sackle in them. The, the lakes up north, again, I told you, Toledo Bend right now is hot. They're fishing deep, deep, deep water, drop shotting in the Carolina rig for the bass. And in Sacolay, they're fishing at treetops like they do with live, live minnows, live shiners. They're fishing at bus stops. Well, we got a report here in Lacombe area uh, when Forrest Green stopped by. He's been working over the Sacolay. Of course, they call them white perch around here. Well, right there in Bayou Lacombe, underneath the trestles, he's uh, throwing some of those soft plastics and popping them and catching the soccer uh, Our friends Todd Masson and Jeff Rule, they made a trip to Venice last week and uh, did a pretty good job down there. He said there's, there's a lot of fish, but the fish are small. He's basically saying use a slow roll down there as in the basin. In fact, spinnerbait has been probably the bait of choice for most all the areas where people are catching fish. Uh, also, they're using the finesse worms. Um, if you're going to be fishing that chef area you talked about, there's a lot of bass being caught in that area. Uh, Jeff suggests using a long cast with a spinnerbait and look for the clear water there. Also, the voodoo shrimp and the Texas rigs. Put those in the drains where the water's mixing, and not only can you come away with bass, but you can also pick up some trout and some redfish, too. Well, Lake Desalmas, again, you know, I, I had that report. I didn't get a new report this weekend, but... At this time of year, when you fish in that area, Lake Des mm -hmm. your boy Cripe Sack, I bet you he's catching oh, yeah. them all yeah. around there. So uh, just go to their website, and a lot of these guys post fishing reports too. So you can just see there, stop out, stop over there at Outdoor Express and ask them guys. They'll tell you if you want to fish Des Almas, get your bait. Outdoor Express, right there on 90. Uh, Don, that's all the fishing report I got. But I want to mention one thing. We got a, we got a, a request. And we're talking about duck habitat, and they said Larry Williams went on there. It's been an ongoing problem that the Sylvania and some of the aquatic, aquatic growth around the Marpaw Swamp, back in them days, that was one of the duck hot spots in the state. The last few years, it's hard to find open water where the ducks can see, plus the feed is not growing when you get that, that Sylvania. That's the local, it's not giant, giant Sylvania, but it's local. Uh, people are asking his request. Your suggestion is, you call the wildlife and fishers or, or email them or check with Larry Reynolds or any of the people over there and, and to do it. Am I right? That would be one way to find out. I'm going to personally find out because I got friends that hunt there for years. I remember Joe and them used to hunt that, Joe McAloose, and they used to put cooking oil out and they worked, they worked the tail off and they still come back. So 
Uh, we need to find out a solution. Well, Salvini is a very formidable opponent, and uh, to eradicate it, and the future doesn't look too bright on that. It's very expensive, and where's the money going to come from to control it? A lot of questions to be asked on that. But you know, it's something that we can bring forward, and if you've got a problem in your area, contact the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. Make sure they're aware of it, and maybe they can offer some solutions for you. That's it. All right, don't forget, send your pictures, your deer, your ducks, your squirrel, your rabbits, your fish, freshwater, saltwater. Send them to Gary at Paradise, Louisiana. And make sure you, if you're using that cell phone, which most of them come in now, turn it to a horizontal position. You want to you fly a kayak and don't have a kayak? Buy your adventures right here in Lacombe. $39 a day. Can't beat it. Great, great service, great sales, and uh, some real friendly advice here. Buy your adventures. We'll see you next week with another edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pods, moving and storage, solved. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Vinny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, and by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.